there, Tom Wolsuski here, and I want to welcome you back to our video blog and thank you for stopping by. Our topic today has been based around some questions we've been getting frequently. We are going to review some top tips to make sure you have a smooth closing. As New York Yankees legend Yogi Berra once declared, it ain't over till it's over. So true. Leans turn up, information changes. That's why experienced agents such as myself stay on top of every transaction, especially in the weeks before closing. To help keep your closing trouble free, we offer 10 tips that pave the way. First off, readiness counts. Notify escrow right away if there are changes in the fees or invoices to be reflected in the closing statement. Also, make sure that you have ready current government issued ID and that will be required in order for closing documents to be notarized. Number two, power of attorney issues. The escrow company must review all power of attorney forms for both adequacy, content, specificity of powers granted and must speak to the grantor or the power of attorney on closing day to verify that it is still granted. This is important for those of us helping parents who might be disabled. Number three, avert a crisis. Report any potential title issues such as improvements, improvement liens, airship questions, bankruptcy, or probate issues as soon as you become aware of them. And I'll add one more point no major purchase during escrow. Number four, cash only. It's important that cashier's check or wired funds payable to the escrow company is required for down payment. Closing costs and any fees due at closing. Personal checks may not exceed $500 typically, and there could be delays in closing to wait for checks to clear. Number five, inspection costs. Inspections should be completed per the contract before expiration of the option period with all invoices for inspections and repairs delivered to the escrow company. I like to get this done as quickly as possible to make sure there are no major problems with the home. Number six, lender updates. It's okay to change lenders, but we need to provide your escrow officer with the name of the new mortgage company and the name and phone number of the loan officer. If the new loan is transferred to another lender, notify us promptly of the change. Also provide the name, of the, the name, address, social security number, and loan number of the seller's present mortgage company as some lenders require 48 to 72 hours advance notice to prepare the payoff statement. Number seven, marital status. Furnish the marital status of the seller and buyer at the time the contract is submitted. If title is vested in one person but the party is married, include the spouse's name on the contract and note that spouse must sign off on the escrow documents should there have been a divorce in the past. A divorce decree will also be needed. Number eight, legal names. In addition to providing a correct legal description of the property, use full legal names of all parties when preparing the contract and include addresses, work, and home phone numbers and email addresses for sellers and buyers. Number nine, repairs and recent construction. For work being done on the real property, delays can be avoided by being proactive and sending information over to the escrow company for remodels, repairs, contracted work, cleanup, or handyman work. The escrow company may request lien waivers or releases, contracts paid in full statements, indemnities, or more. Last, number 10, good faith estimates. You should be aware that the good faith estimate provided by the lender at the time of the application is only an estimate of the necessary closing costs. It will be updated during the escrow process and you will be given a final closing statement for approval and sign off before closing. So that's it for now. I hope this information has been helpful. There will be a link below this video where you can see all of these videos and more. Until we talk again, it's Tom Olsuski saying 
make it a great day.